Hi, and welcome back. And in this session, we're going to be looking at the card with states. Now, the card with states is really kind of based off of the traditional Power BI built-in card, but this gives you some additional features that you can't do with a traditional card. It almost has a combination of a card and a KPI in one. And that's what you're going to see with this, is that you can actually abind different performance measures that you'd like to view. So through three different states, whether you're in a positive, negative, or kind of in an in-between medium state, you can actually bring in data that supports that and be able to identify whether that metric that you're looking at is meeting the requirements that you have or not. Uh, you can visualize one or more measures, so you can actually have one measure that's being shown while another measure is being used for the indicator. So you can see here on the, the screenshot on the right-hand side, I'm saying that I'm in the good uh, as far as this measure is concerned. Now that reference of a good, whatever good means, can be determined by a completely different measure than what you're displaying above it if you would like to. So you, can, you have some flexibility when it comes to that. Now this visual is going to be published by OKViz, which is a project by SQL BI, the guys there, and they've gotten some great visuals uh, already built out. And I'm going to show you a little bit of their website because they're actually publishing, uh, in addition to the Power BI gallery, they're publishing to their own gallery on their website. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of that before we get started, but let's go ahead and take a look next. All right, now everything we've done previously has come from the Power BI gallery, and that's what we're looking at, the custom visual gallery which you can find when you go to visuals.powerbi.com. Now, the next visual that I'm going to show you is designed by a company called OKViz. Okay you can see it's right here. It's called the Card with States. And, of course, you can download it from the Power BI Gallery. And you'll see that it does have the uh, download visual here. You can also download the sample. But what I'm going to show you today is a sli slightly different. This company called OKViz okay has actually created their own gallery for their own visuals. And they have about four or five different ones that they've designed so far. And they're going to create more. And uh, the reason why I want to show you their gallery, at least briefly, is because they're actually publishing to both the Power BI gallery and their own solution for, for one reason. Uh, the Power BI gallery does not keep up with the release cycle that they have. And so if they have something that's in beta and they want to be able to allow you to test it, or you know, if they've just completed something and want to release it, the Power BI gallery is a little bit slower to get some of these visuals out. And so that's why they've created their own gallery that I'm going to show you here next. Note here you can see that the version that's on the Power BI gallery of this tool we're going to look at is version 1.2.3. And whenever we go to their website, you'll find it's version 1.2.4. So they are a little bit more up to date on the version on their website. Uh, so their website is called okviz.com. So if you simply go to okviz.com, let me go back to the root here. And when you go back to their website, their root website, they do have several visuals that they've already published out here. And you can kind of search through them if you go to the visual section here. And you can see, indeed, there are five different ones that they've created. Uh, some, some of them are newer than others, but they have published all these out here on their website. It's at okviz.com. Now, for the example we're going to be doing today, by the way, they do tell you that information I gave you on why they have their own gallery. They have that information here in case you're curious why. Uh, but let's what, go ahead and get focused in on our demo on this module, which is going to be the card with states. That's the one right here. And you can go ahead and you can see there's a video on how to use it. You can download it. You can even download older versions of it from their website as well. So there's some additional features by using their website. It even tells you which version is on the Power BI gallery versus the version that is on their website. It, you can see here there is a difference between the two. All right, great. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back over to the Power BI gallery and start to use this example. So let's flip over to the Power BI gallery. Here we go. And inside the Power BI Gallery, this time I'll go ahead and get started by importing the visual. So I'll go over to my Import section here in the Visual menu and tell it I want to import from a file. We already are very familiar with this at this point, so I'm going to hit Import. All right, so I'm going to go back here for a moment to the class files that we have inside of our Power BI Custom Visuals Class Lab. And in my Custom Visuals folder, you can see I've already downloaded the version 1.2.4 from their website. So I'll select the card with states and hit Open. Now, our next step, you can hit OK on that to confirm the import. Our next step is to actually go pull in some data. So I'll get my data by going up to the Get Data section here in the top left. And we're going to be pulling in our data from Excel. So I'll select Excel as the format as our data source is pulling from. The data that we're going to be pulled from is in the class files. You can also find a download link below if you're following along in the uh, video. And I'll go underneath the data section here. And we're going to be pulling in a file called Sales Performance. And so I'll select the sales performance file here and open that up. And you'll see there's a sales by state section here, or a spreadsheet. So I'll go ahead and select sales by state. And you can see there's quite a bit of data that comes in, a list of all of the states, then the quantity they sold, the sales amount, as well as the uh, minimum, the maximum, of the, the red section, the yellow section, and the green section. 
So I'm going to go ahead and bring this data in just as it appears here, and I'll select Load. Now before I go ahead and show you the custom visual that we're focused in on, I'm going to start by bringing in a regular bar chart, and that way we can kind of use that as another way to visualize this data, and we can also use it to filter the results that we're going to get to here in a few moments. So to get started here first, I'm going to bring in the state province. Okay, so you can see it automatically puts it into a map. We'll change that to a bar chart here in a moment. And I also want to see the sales amount. So I'll select the sales amount field here. And then again, like I said, I'm going to switch this to a bar chart, like so. Now, of course, this is just a regular visual that's built into Power BI. I can sort it. If I come up here, if I wanted to, I could sort it by the sales amount. And there we are. All right, good enough. So we've got the uh, card with states already imported. I'm going to now bring that card with states in. So I'm going to select the card with states right here, bring that into my visual. And again, you'll see the difference between the regular card and this one in a moment because this one has so many more settings that you can select from. There's the uh, field you want to focus in on and display. And then there's the field that you want to be ba the basis of whether or not you've met your goal or not. And then you can kind of set the, the start and end section of your uh, status indicator, whether or not you've met your goal or not. All right, so for this one, what we'd like to display in the card is the quantity, but I want to base all of the metrics, whether or not we met our goal or not, off the sales quantity. So I'm going to, uh, off the sales amount, excuse me. So I'm going to start by bringing in the quantity, and that'll place it in and show it in the actual number indicator here. That's showing it in the uh, field list here. That's just like any other card. So if I would compare this to the regular card, they would look almost identical here, if not as exactly identical. You can see they are formatted here slightly different. But this is the regular card that's included with Power BI in the bottom. This is the card with states on the top. You can see they're basically the same. The formatting is a little bit different, but so far, basically the same thing here. But where these two differ is when I want to add additional functionality in the card with states. And that's the giving me the ability to look at things as almost like if, if it were a KPI here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a few more fields. I'll select the card with states again, and I'm going to bring in the sales amount. So I'll find the sales amount field. You can see that actually initially changes the color there. That tells you that this card with states is going to allow you to actually uh, make the indicator here represented by a different field that's not quantity that I've already selected. And then I'll bring in things like the red minimum. Okay, I'll bring in the red max. Okay, so you can see these states are kind of filling themselves in here inside the field well. And so I'd also like to bring in the yellow minimum and the yellow max. And then finally, I'll bring in the green minimum and the green max. All right, so what this has done now is it's taken from a data set that I have, and I can show you what the data set looks like. The data set that I have actually tells me what the different ranges of whether or not I met my goal are. Okay, so if I met my goal, I might have a value here, and you might, here it might have a little bit of overlap if I have something that's exactly on 50,000, so it may, sense, may make sense to have this one as 49,999. But you get the idea. I'm able here now to see the range of values, and when anything falls within those ranges, they would be identified as red if it's between 0 and 50,000. If it's between 50,000 and 100,000, then it would be yellow. And if it's between 100,000 and 650,000, then it would be green. So if I have any data that lands between that, you can see my actual sales results here on the left-hand side. I can now kind of toggle between the different states that I have and see whether or not I have actually met my goal in these different states. So say, for example, if I uh, wanted to go look at a state like Connecticut, let's uh, resort this here and put it back in the state order. If I wanted to look at Connecticut, and I'll sort it A to Z here, there we go. If I select Connecticut where I can see there's not a whole lot of sales going on, I can select Connecticut, I can see that we're in the yellow. I didn't quite meet my goal. I fell within the two states of the ones that we looked at here just a moment ago. If I select the card, you can see it's the states of state two. So if it's state two, well, that was my yellow minimum and my yellow max, it fell between those two ranges. So what happens though if I don't have data within those ranges? So say for example, my ranges are a little bit mixed up. Let's say that I don't have a min, a max of every one of these states. So say for example, we're looking at state two. That's the medium range, that's my yellow range. When I looked at Connecticut here a moment ago, I saw that it fell within the yellow range. Well, what happens when I don't have anything in the yellow range? Perhaps I don't even have a range itself. So if I kill the yellow, t yellow range, the uh, state 2 and state 1, you'll notice that it immediately makes it black. That indicates that there is nothing to really fall between those indicators. And so it's just returning it as black when, and not in a state 1, state 2, or state 3. Now, you do have the ability here to actually overwrite that. So if you don't have certain states, like I just removed state 2. Let's pretend for a moment like I didn't, never had any data for that. If I didn't have any data for state 2, you can actually manually type over what you want state 2 to look like. And so let's take a look at how you can actually customize 
the card view here. I'm going to unselect uh, Connecticut for a moment. We might select it again whenever we want to look at some of what we've done. I'm going to go back over to the formatting section that you're probably very familiar with at this point, and let's talk through a few of the things that you can do here. Let's start first, if we scroll down, you'll find that there is a section here, once I select the card, uh, that there's a section down here called Category Labels. And if I expand that for a moment, let's take a look at what we can do in the Category Labels. This Category label section allows me to change how the actual label shows when it comes to the value label that we're looking at here. So we're looking at 9.04 million in quantity. And so I may want to do something like actually rename this and actually give it a real name, like the quantity, spell it out if I'd like here. Uh, you can, of course, do some other things like change the color of the text if you want. Maybe you want it to show up as black instead of showing up as that gray color that we typically see. You can, of course, increase the text size if you'd like. You can see that's showing up here. And you can also change the margins. Basically, how much space do you want to give between the number that you're seeing and uh, the other things around it. So you have a few things that you can do to change around here. If the, if the text is particularly long, you can turn on or turn off word wrapping so that it would wrap onto the next line here if the, the text was particularly long. So there are a few nice settings that you have available here. All right, now let's look right above this. You'll see that there's three different properties here for states. I have state one, state two, state three. They're all identical here as you open them up. They have a place where you can actually overwrite or, or key in a value for what the range is going to be if you didn't have a value. You can also change the color itself. So instead of being a traditional red, green, yellow, you can change that. And you can turn on or turn off labels. So let me show you what that label looks like. If I were to go to state three for a moment, which I know is the green state, I can turn on labels and it'll actually give me a little label here below that says that, hey, we're doing great. And you can change that label if you wanted to. I can change this from saying great to something like bonus time or something like that. So it's very clear that, hey, we're doing well. We're going to make our bonus because uh, we're in the, the green state here. Now let's go back to state two for a moment because that's actually where we had a no values represented here. And that's why when we selected Connecticut, it showed up black because we didn't have any values that represented within inside of that state two. Now you can overwrite these if you wanted to. You can come in here and I can type in a value. I can say anything between uh, 50,000 and 100,000 in here. I could give that as a state and you'll see you can also manually overwrite that. And as soon as I did that, the yellow state reappeared here. You can also turn on labels just like you could before. So this is called moderate. Maybe I don't want to uh, call that moderate. You saw a moment ago we could re rechange the name of it. I could say something like uh, not quite, didn't quite get it as uh, your, your uh, state there where you didn't quite make the results you were looking for. Very interesting, but you can kind of overwrite the labels there. It's nice that you can do that as well. All right, so a couple things that we can look at. We've, we've looked at here as far as the settings. There are also data labels that you can turn on. The data label is the, the, the number itself that you see here. So if you want to set it so that it's not uh, putting the number here as 47.47K, you can come in here and turn off the, the display units and say none, and it'll actually show you the true value here if you'd like. If you want a comma separator in there, that's more the data model itself. I would go to the quantity field here and go to the modeling ribbon, and that would allow me to change the formatting to add in a comma separator like you see there. And you can also change the decimal places if you wanted to increase or decrease decimal places. You can also increase or decrease the text size. So if I wanted the size of that number to change, you could come here and increase that or decrease that. All the other settings you've seen here in the past and other visuals, so adding a border, you can of course add a border around it if you'd like, like you see here. You can also of course do things like lock the aspect ratio, add a background color if you'd like. So I can add in some kind of a background color and make it transparent if I wanted to, like so. And so all these other features are ones that you've had in the past. They show up in just about every one of the visuals, and they also show up here in the card with states. The th nice thing here, again, though, is that you have more control over what you can do with a card. It's not just a card. It's kind of a car card and a KPI indicator at once, and you can, of course, have it interact with the other features that you have inside of the visuals here. So in this case, I have a, a bar chart that's also combining with the card with states. Hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to look forward to the next one where we look at our next Tusk Custom Visual.